The Milano is easily one of my favorite vehicles or ships in the Marvel Universe. And while LEGO did make two different LEGO sets depicting this ship, both of them have a lot of positives and negatives. And for this design, I combined all of the best parts of both of those ships, like the different stickered elements or the printed cockpit of the second version, and made what I would say is the ultimate LEGO Milano at an affordable minifigure scale. A lot of the details in this build are going to be based more around the first movie versus the second movie. And the main base for this build is from the Guardians 1 version of the Milano. So if you have that one, that'll be a very good amount of pieces to start building this one. And if you want to get the instructions for this ship or any of my other custom builds, check out the Rebrookable page in the description. This will be free for the next week. And after that, I'll be charging $1, which is a very fair price for the size of this build. And will go to support me in buying new pieces for different designs I'm going to be putting out in the future. Let's go ahead and check out all the different details in this build. Like in both official models, you can adjust all of the exterior wings. I did use the stickered versions that are from the Guardians 1 ship. And you can put one on the bottom that's posable. Moving along the side, I really enjoy the sloped pieces that were used in the Guardians 1 version. And one of the hardest things to engineer was figuring out a way to do this and integrate this sort of wedge brick that was used in the Guardians 2 version. And I think the way that I put this together on both sides, it works very well and kind of creates that point right in the middle. Just have like some stickered gray that I tried to blend into some actual bricks. And you know what? It maybe isn't perfect, but it does the job. Kept the use of a round piece in the front there to match whatever those metal rings are on the actual ship. And just threw on another tile to accent that a bit. I used the symbol from the Guardians 2 Milano. And overall, the wing shaping has just become much more smooth and the colors are placed a little bit more accurately since my first model. One of the bigger changes that I've done to the back is the inclusion of the General Grievous cockpit piece as a back window. And I also made it so you can move the rear thrusters. On top of that, I also put in the instructions an option to put a power blast effect into the back just to give it some more thrust. And I kind of looked at some of the reference frames from the movie. I switched out the bottom thruster color from orange to blue, and it, I believe it's more accurate. The interior is much different from the last time I showed it off. While it is mostly based on Guardians 1, I did include one little detail for Guardians 2, being that you can have Groot standing at the back window and peeking out, just like he does when they leave the Sovereign from the second movie. One downside to the Guardians 1 ship originally was that the interior was a little bit cramped. The original model had the stereo sticking out a bit. I integrated it completely into the wall to free up an extra brick of space. And just as a fun little detail, I have Rocket back there working on the Hadron Enforcer. There's a couple of different jumper plates on the inside here to have figures standing around. I also have Groot sitting on this dark orange chair. This is an optional part for the build, and that is just because it is a bit of a rare part. It only came in one of the older Millennium Falcon ships, but the color is perfect and adds a little bit more detail than what I included in the instructions, which is just a little stool. The main focal area of this back interior is the table seen throughout the movies. For instance, when Barit and Peter are talking, and you can also see on the back wall there, I also have the little TV screen for the cosmic zoom call with Yondu. This table is a pretty simple build, but is pretty effective for what is seen in the movie. It uses light aqua, I think the color is. And I have these quarter circle tiles on there. In the instructions, I just did the one by two tiles. Because this table is kind of a weird shape, I kind of like having that extra detail. But this would obviously save parts. And you know, it could go either way what you want. I also included just a jumper tile on there, just in case you wanted to put Whatever on the table, the other wall of the ship is where it gets a little bit more interesting. You can see I have the cassette player right there. You can use really any tile with the cassette printing on this. I think this is the one from the Micro Fighter. And I created the drawers and like just some shelving. This kind of is where the gift from his mom was. I also continued on the joke from a lot of like Marvel sets where they have a fire extinguisher. 
And to the last bit of interior, and it's probably the area that I'm most excited about, is the cockpit area. It uses this great dome piece from the Guardians 2 version, as well as both of the Benatar builds have had this. It's a really great piece and very specialized for the Guardian ships. And I was able to squeeze in three custom-built chairs. It's not 100% accurate, you know, you're supposed to have two side-by-side -side at the front. But I am still pretty happy that I was able to put some pretty detailed side builds and fit all of those characters right in that area. Chairs also are able to be removed pretty easily. And for these back two, they have a little bit less detail just because I needed to squeeze them in against the walls. I always think my favorite challenges when it comes to Lego are some of those smaller builds. And I always put in so much effort to get all the small details and the a very small build as I can, especially in the case of this chair. Like you can see in this version right here, it has that ingot piece for that headrest. Another great option in that dark orange color is just to use one of those half round tiles that you can see there from the dots line. I think both of these work pretty well. This one will be a lot easier to straighten out and have even. This one, since it is hollow on the inside, kind of slides around. And just a couple of closing remarks for this build. It is a display model. You know, you're going to move this around. Some parts might move a little bit out of the way. And, you know, it's pretty lucky. It's Lego. Anything breaks off, you can just put it back on. You might need to tweak where the positioning of the parts are every once in a while. I wanted to get a healthy balance of detail, which, you know, you obviously have to get rid of some of the stability and structure for that. You're going to be able to pick this up from a lot of different places so it's not like it's breaking apart all the time but there are some somewhat loose connections like i said earlier if you have the guardians one ship you're gonna have a pretty decent amount of parts to build this and if you have both versions of the milano that's going to be very helpful too anything that i added on here for the most part is going to be available on pick a brick directly from lego so that's going to save you a lot on shipping and make it a lot easier for you to build this on your own. And if you don't have the ship, you know, you can always not use the stickered parts. Just use the blank ones and it'll still be a pretty decent model for the Milano. And here's just a quick comparison for this version of the Milano with the rest of the Gardens of the Galaxy Lego set ships. And really, this is just a great collection of interesting shapes, interesting color combinations. And having them all together like this is just amazing. I love the movies and it's great to have a collection of definitive ships. Obviously the Bowie is brand new but just looking at it in the holiday special and I've already seen Guardians 3 twice now. That's just a great representation. It's been a really great project to improve this in every way that I could and just make the best Milano model possible for me even as a collector. I definitely think this is one of those ships. If you're a Marvel fan, you definitely have to have it. That's always my main focus, is to make a really great product, and also something that I'm going to be happy with, because most of my builds are going to be going right into my collection. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to see more LEGO Marvel builds or any other sort of LEGO content, check out all of the other videos on my channel. I've been Brick Radiop, and I'll see you in the next video.